Hello everyone. Professor Fausto Pinto's last video title has attracted many great clinical comments from healthcare professional viewers. Today, Professor Pinto will be giving his feedback about angina management. Before we start, please be reminded you can access Professor Pinto's full video title of Traditional to Trailblazing, Advancement in Angina Treatment by clicking the web link in the description box below. Are there any guidelines or recommendations regarding the optimal duration of conservative treatment before considering an invasive strategy for stable angina patients? The current guidelines recommend a trial of optimized medical therapy for at least four to six weeks before considering invasive treatment for stable angina patients. However, the decision to pursue invasive treatment should be individualized based on the patient's symptoms, risk factors, and comorbidities. In your practice, how do you determine the optimal medical therapy for patients with stable angina? And how does it vary among individual patients? Genetic profiling and AI may potentially contribute to precision medicine approaches for the treatment of stable angina by identifying genetic variants that may influence treatment response and using AI algorithms to predict individual treatment outcomes based on patient-specific data. This is a fascinating new area that is still under investigation, but with a huge potential for the use of both to improve future management of stable angina. How does the combination of trimetazidine, TMZ, with other antianginal medications contribute to reducing angina symptoms in patients with stable angina? Trimetazidine, TMZ, has been shown to improve angina symptoms and exercise tolerance in patients with stable angina when used in combination with other antianginal medications, such as beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, nitrates, evabradine and others. As an example, the combination of trimetazidine with beta blockers will attain better results than just up titrating beta blockers dosage. TMZ works by improving myocardial energy metabolism which can help reduce ischemia and improve symptoms. In your opinion, what antianginal drugs can be best combined with trimetazidine, and how would this vary based on patient profile? The choice of antianginal drug to combine with trimetazidine will depend on the patient's individual characteristics, such as their blood pressure, heart rate, and comorbidities. Common options include beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, and long-acting nitrates. How do diabetes and hypertension impact the prognosis and treatment approach of patients with microvascular angina? Diabetes and hypertension can both contribute to microvascular dysfunction in patients with stable angina, which can impact treatment outcomes. In these patients, aggressive blood pressure and glucose control may be necessary to improve symptoms and reduce the risk of adverse events. This is also a group of patients where has been clearly demonstrated the advantage on the use of a metabolic approach with agents, such as trimetazidine. Are there any specific risk factors or characteristics that can help identify individuals with stable angina who are at even higher risk for adverse events? Patients with stable angina who have additional risk factors, such as advanced age, diabetes, previous cardiovascular events or reduced left ventricular function, may be at higher risk for adverse events. These patients may require more aggressive treatment and closer monitoring to ensure optimal outcomes. Can you further explain the effects of long-acting nitrates on endothelial dysfunction and its relevance to stable angina management? Long-acting nitrates act on the smooth muscle cells that constitute the muscular layer of the arteries, including the coronary arteries. They have also been shown to help improving endothelial dysfunction and increase coronary blood flow in patients with stable angina. However, long-term use of nitrates can lead to tolerance and rebound symptoms, which may limit their efficacy. What are the most important considerations in choosing and adjusting any ischemic medications based on each patient's characteristics and preferences? When choosing and adjusting anti-ischemic medications for stable angina, it is important to consider the patient's comorbidities medication tolerability, and potential drug interactions. Preferences and lifestyle factors should also be taken into account to ensure optimal adherence to treatment. In your practice, how do you determine the optimal medical therapy for patients with stable angina, and how does it vary among individual patients? In practice, 
The optimal medical therapy for patients with stable angina will depend on the patient's individual characteristics and treatment goals. A thorough evaluation of the patient's symptoms, risk factors, and comorbidities can help guide treatment decisions and optimize outcomes. It is also very important to engage the patient in the treatment, explaining how the different drugs work, and how to deal with the symptoms. This may vary according with some other conditions, such as educational and social level, that should be taken into account when managing these patients. What are the common reasons why patients may still experience symptoms after undergoing PCI for stable angina? Despite successful PCI, some patients with stable angina may still experience symptoms due to factors, such as incomplete revascularization, progression of underlying atherosclerotic disease, or non-cardiac causes of chest pain. These patients may require further evaluation and management to determine the cause of their persistent symptoms. It is important to understand that PCI will only relieve epicardial flow-limiting lesions and will not interfere directly with other important components, such as the microcirculation, endothelial function, vasomotricity, etc. Before you click the link in the description box below to watch the full version video, you may take 30 seconds to know what P2P can offers. At P2P, you're more than just a spectator. Right now, tens of thousands of healthcare professionals are actually watching this video. You may take this opportunity to post your own cases, best practices, and research data in the comment box underneath the video. So, don't miss out on this chance to make your work known to global peers.